there and welcome to another episode of Geek Out with Perry. I recently traveled to London where I spoke with customers who asked me about how we're able to provide such a large mailbox at such a low price. So we'll chat today about how we make that work. Perry, how do we do it? Well, uh, we've spent some time talking before about um, how uh, we take advantage of commodity storage to okay. provide large uh, mailboxes. Um, we've invested in reducing our IOs and uh, building on top of uh, cheap disk drives. But I, I think the real question is how, how come the service is so cheap, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, there's really just one word, scale, right? This is something that is intrinsically different than what you get on premise. It allows us to do interesting things to reduce costs. Okay. One of the examples. Uh, because we are operating a large scale, um, we get something called time averaging. Okay. So if you think about um, what you have to build to, um, you always have to provide enough hardware at your company to support a peak load of your system, right? Yep. So you can imagine that peak is Monday mornings at 10 a.m. when people pile into work for a certain kind of company. Yeah. Um, all this is free resources, right? Yep. Okay. Because we're running at large scale and have a diverse set of customers, yeah, we have other customers that come in and their peak uh, can look like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, or if you think about all the students at universities that are part of our service, you know, they come and start doing email at like nine at night and they're sleeping all during the day. And if you add that all up, you end up with a system that looks like this. And you don't need to buy very much hard, more hardware, but you can support a lar much larger set of users. Okay. okay, so that time averaging thing is actually a pretty significant part of it. But there are other uh, things that we get from scale. We are part of a large, very large organization that's building not just large investments for exchange, but uh, for a lot of other uh, services. So uh, there's a big investment in within Microsoft in general about efficient data centers. Okay. Right. Uh, so uh, our power and cooling uh, requirements are very efficient in the in the data center designs, and also they're located in places in which the power is cheaper because the data centers are located close to the, uh, to the, the power sources. To the power sources. That has implications for how we build our software. We need to make sure that the system tolerates the the latencies uh, and provides a great service. Uh, you know, even with a data center uh, a little bit further away. If you compare the cost of power in Colorado to the cost of power in downtown Manhattan, you can begin to understand yeah. uh, some of the, the wins we get um, uh, from uh, uh, being able to invest at that kind of scale. We also get to th look very carefully at uh, the exact requirements we have for our service and get very optimized hardware uh, defined for the exact scenarios that we're doing. So there is absolutely no wasted components um, in the machines that we deploy, and the scenario exactly fits uh, the, the load we get. So aside from scale, what other things have we done to make the service more efficient? Well, one of the things that uh, we get to take advantage of on in the service is um, we can really directly see what the user profile is. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're designing our software, we're often making uh, a lot of uh, informed guesses about the way people are going to use them. And across all the different companies, there's an awful lot of uncertainty about exactly the way people are using them. Within the service, it is actually exists, right? We can mm -hmm. actually just directly go and measure every single verb that happens. If you think within just the active sync protocol, one of very many protocols, there's very many different commands that we can look at. Mm -hmm. And we can look at the rates of each one of them, and we can measure how many CPU cycles and how many disk IOs they do for each of those commands. Okay. We rank those, and then we can, uh, and do, go back and address them very directly. So this ability to know exactly what the profile is and map that to the, the cost it's actually driving, and then in a tight feedback loop, go and optimize the worst offenders, as it were, uh, and get those addressed and get a nice feedback loop is a key part. So how does all of this help on-premises customers as well? Well, I think uh, one of the interesting things is that as we've gone through and looked at the hardware designs that we're getting from the vendors, mm -hmm. that's actually turning into new hardware that's being, uh, that they're bringing to market for the on-premise market, right? As we think through uh, and see actually the profile that we're using, uh -huh. often those same problems are showing up in a lot of our customers. So the, the fast uh, rate of uh, improvement we get here translates back into uh, fixes that we do uh, uh, for the customer. There is a set of things
things, however, that is very difficult for a customer to do, like uh, the time averaging thing is pretty inherent mm -hmm. to uh, a service scenario. So do these investments also help us in our commitment to the environment and becoming greener? Well, I, I think one of the most important things you can think about is uh, just the, the fact that we are saving money is a very direct indication that we're making uh, big improvements in terms of the impact on the environment. The amount of hardware we buy is less, mm -hmm. right? So there's less impact on the environment from wasted hardware. Yeah. The amount of power we're using is less because we're not wasting uh, power running CPUs that aren't, uh, that aren't actually doing useful work. Yeah. Um, uh, the fact that we've highly optimized the system to meet the actual needs means that we don't have pieces of equipment or power being used to uh, things that are, are not very efficient. And at the data center level, the amount of extra power that has to go into the data center to cool it yeah. right, is a very small uh, increment compared to most data centers uh, that get deployed at the uh, on the on-premise level. So yeah. you get dramatic power savings even after all those other savings that have been applied. Uh, that power savings goes directly to the amount of carbon emissions that are going to be em em uh, emitted. Thanks to all of you for watching, and as always, keep the feedback coming. Send us topic ideas and read Perry's blog for more information. Thanks again.